Hi everyone, I'm going to react to Avatar The Last Airbender, episode the 12, season 1, episode 12, and last episode, and resolve this conflict between uh, these two warring clans by lying, <laughs> I guess. So yeah, that's what happened, and uh, before getting to this episode, if you guys have a reaction, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and yeah. Please consider supporting your Patreon at patreon.com slash mini. And now let's start this episode and here we go. Okay guys, in case the reaction gets blocked and I had to cut out the reaction itself, you can just look in the pinned comment in the comment section where for the link to the reaction highlight itself. So you can just click on it, watch it, and then you just come back for my review. We're gonna see how that happened. Okay, we're gonna see what happened. Book one, water, chapter 12, the storm. Is dreaming? They're all dreaming. There's a storm coming. Yo, the title of the episode. It's gonna wake up. Yep. There was a flash of something that happened. <laughs> he captured it. No. <laughs> Uncle! Yep. He's gonna say no. Okay. <laughs> Question. He's banished, right? So why are all the other um, fire people following him on the ship? Okay, the storm is coming. Okay. He's... You just said it. <laughs> mm. Maybe you'll feel better. <sighs> Come down, Zuko. A monkey's uncle. <laughs> mm. The dream. Yep, yep. <laughs> Why don't the others have the error? Shape stuff that is the day two. Uh, 
and he was afraid of that. That's way too much responsibility. And he went away. He didn't know how to deal. Aww, Suko, without the scar. You finally gotta know what happened, right? Did he speak? He's gonna speak up because of that. Oh, really? Huh? Isn't airbending airbending like... Is that why he ran away? He left? Oh, shoot. Oh, I thought state. Now there goes the sister. Look at her smile. Is that the fisher? Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> it's your husband out there. How the hell did she, she get up there? How the hell did he do that? I knew it. Uh... <laughs> mm -hmm. 
What a bending. Ah, <gasps> uh, same situation. Are you gonna you do that again? Hey, hey, hey. How are you gonna save them? Oh, was he like the ball of air thingy that he used to do, but bigger? What I loved about this episode was the parallel that was going on between um, Zuko and um, Aang. Both of them, Calvin, well, it was Aang that was telling his story and then you had um, Iroh telling Zuko's story. Okay, Aang was having this nightmares about him running away and um, the monks needing him, like the world needing him, and stuff like that. And then he did, was having a hard time talking about it to Katara. It was wasn't until this old man sort of like threw it in his face that it was because of him that this war happened. It's because he ran away that this war happened, and he couldn't deal with it, so he left with his flying thingy kite. What was it? What's it called again? I'm sure they called it something in the, in the show, but I don't remember. So he used that to fly away, and Kotara used Appa to follow him. And then they came into this cave up there in the mountains. In the mountains. Well, the cave was up there, wasn't down there. So I was like, how did the old lady get there? <laughs> like, I don't know. It was weird to me. The way she like she just showed up and she like help help, I'm like is it really like a real person, a real human being, or is it like I don't know, like a spiritual guide that was trying to help, um, and go through this. I don't know, but I didn't think it was real. She was real. Wasn't until her and the old man, her husband, like they met back up again. That was when I'm like, okay, maybe it was her. Cause I'm like, how the heck did she get up there? When Ang and uh, Papa and Kata flew there, you know. But then they, Ang told Katara exactly what happened. And the thing was, he used to be like a normal little kid playing around with his friends and stuff, and then they told him that he was the avatar and that they knew already they, they've known a long time ago just because he picked up he picked out of a lot of toys he picked the ones that the previous avatar used so they're like okay so he must be the avatar as well and they're like you usually normally they would tell him on his 16th birthday which would be he's 12 years old now right so it would be like in four years they would tell him that he was the avatar but because this is the war approaching they're like okay we need to prepare and they need to prepare and for that war that was coming and because he was revealed to, to be the avatar even the kids weren't playing with him anymore i didn't really get that I mean, they did say that the Avatar is the master of all four elements, and at his particular age, he wasn't really the master. I guess he's. I don't know. He's the one that came up with the air ball thing, so I guess he has more aptitude than the others. Maybe that's why they didn't want to have him on any teams. But I'm like, like really? 
yesterday you guys were playing okay and then you learned that he's the avatar and that he can't be on anything but whatever so he wasn't playing with the kids anymore and then even Gyato that was Gyato understood that Aang was a kid and that he also needed some downtime to play and be a normal kid do a normal kid stuff but then you had this other um airbender that's like no he needs to be studying like all the time and then they went and gets into the lead airbender in the village to their version of uh yeah king whatever so they went to this person and the guy's like okay now we need to separate you and Gyato, and you're just gonna um and he's just gonna go to the this is eastern air temple to train like all the time and Aang heard that and he's like nah -uh. he was confused and he just not confused but he didn't want to deal with that anymore so he just wrote a letter for Gyatso and left <laughs> after telling the story and then um Gyatso came in and he's like I'm not gonna let them separate us but then he found the scroll the letter right on the bed and I'm like they always do this type of stuff in movies shows like anything everything like when they're trying to this person is telling his story and then they're showing like uh, the backstory from another person's point of view when the person that's actually telling the story is not really there like Aang wasn't there when Gyaso came in and found the letter so technically since it's him that's telling the story he shouldn't be he shouldn't have known that you know but yeah so Gyaso I just don't know what Gyaso would have done would he have taken him and left the air, the temple together I don't know but the point is Aang left and then you know the storm and then he fell and then he used the avatar state and you know ice so that was his part of it and then when um the old lady came in like my husband is in danger and then Aang left and they helped you know rescue them and everything and even they sort of like had the same situation where he fell into the water a hundred years ago he fell to the water and then the ice thing happened but this time when he fell he still used his avatar state but i feel like he used it to make a bigger air ball that sort of enveloped them in the water and he used it to um get all of them out and then you had the zuko part of it like based on what they said um like in the previous previously they showed a little clip of it when um Iro was asking him if you remember what happened the last time he faced the master so i'm like okay it must have been his father that he faced or maybe i already knew that because i watched some parts of the show for like years 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 ago i don't know but when they were telling his backstory and he's like okay he wanted to join up since he's been prepped to replace uh what was his father's name have they ever mentioned it um hmm, hmm. ozai carlo ozai when yeah since ozai has been i guess prepping him to replace him to become the fire lord he felt like he should learn more right about the wars and how the those kind of meetings go and at first i didn't want to take him but he's like okay i'm gonna take you but just know that in this particular kind of meetings he's not allowed to speak so i'm like okay he's gonna speak because <laughs> he has to he has to break some kind of rules to be banished so when they were in the meeting and then this this dude was like they were gonna send these people these newbies to this fortified um earth bending place or whatever to be sort of like sacrificial lambs and zuko spoke up about it i'm like zuko was right you know like that's messed up but then he's not allowed to speak and because he spoke, they were like, okay, Agni Kai. And Zuko thought that he was going to be facing the general that he spoke up against. But no. Well, it turns out that he was going to face his father. And when he was his father, he's like, I can't face my father. And he was just like, 
begging for mercy or something or other. Um, okay. It, how do you feel his father? I feel like even though the father would have defeated him, I guess it would have been the winner in the... Wait a second. In Agni Kai's, aren't you are you supposed to kill the person that you're facing? Because I know Zuko when he um, faced the the person um, Zhao, when he faced Kumail the Zhao, like he let him live, and then Zhao was like, that's why he's weak, like he didn't finish the job or something. So I'm assuming based on what he said that it's supposed to be a duel to the death, maybe. And maybe if that's the case and Zuko thought that the, he was going to be facing the old man and he would have won against the old man. But now since he's his father, then his father would have killed him and he didn't want to die. And that's why he was begging for mercy. I don't know. I feel like, okay, if it's, you're supposed to do to the death, then I understand Zuko begging for mercy because his father is stronger than him, clearly. So if he's gonna die, you know, he's gonna try to beg for his life. Okay. But if the duel is not to the death and it's just like you need to have like a clear winner, then I see where Zuko begging for mercy might anger Ozai more enough to banish him because it's not like it's a duel to the death. You can just try your best and still be defeated and then that would be it but i don't know but the point is he begged for death and because he did that his father's like yeah that was him being weak and he felt disrespected or something or other and then he managed to go until he finds the avatar i guess and i don't know if in zuko's mind the fact that he finds the avatar, everything's gonna go back to normal. But clearly, I was like, nah, he's never gonna go back to normal again. Cause, and then while they were gonna have this duel, they showed his sister. What was her name again? Zula, Zulu. I don't know, some kind of name like that. She was there having this smirk on her face, like clearly being happy about what was playing in front of her. So, yeah. And the reason why they all went to this backstory is because, because Zuko was being so consumed, so focused on finding the Avatar and capturing him that they were heading straight into this storm. And Zuko said that it doesn't matter who who dies in his search of you know finding the Avatar or something like that. And then the others were like, so he doesn't particularly care about our lives, you know. And they were getting angry, especially this particular guy. And that's when Iroh went to them and told them exactly what was going on with Zuko. And they understood. And then when they came to um, the storm that was happening, and then one of them was like stuck up there, was clearly in danger. And Zuko like went after him. And the other two also went after Zuko as well. And they were able to get the guy down from up there. And while they were in there, they saw um, Aang and um, Appa flying overhead. But then Zuko was like, just let him go and let's get everybody to safety first. So I'm like, oh, Like he priorita prioritized the safety of his men over finding the Avatar. Zuko is a good man. He's a good boy. Young boy. But he's not a man man yet. Is he also 12 years old? <laughs> I don't know, but he's a good boy, and it's just that the nation, the Fire Nation, the family in which he was born, him and Uncle Iroh, like, they are good people. It's Ozai and the sister, they are the ones like, ugh, and Zhao, ugh, I haven't met, um, properly met the sister yet i know i've seen some stuff of hers like years and years ago and yeah so i don't know i'm just i, I can't wait for that moment because i know it's gonna happen when suko and uh Aang are gonna become 
friends, sort of. They have to become friends, right? I think I remember something like that. So I can't wait for that to happen. Thank you guys for watching. And if you like this reaction, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. And if you want to see the next episode right now, you can do so by checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash And you can also see the full life of this reaction there as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.